It's my pleasure in front of a group of authors to present you our study under the title Brown Hair Spotlight Census, where we are testing uh, alternative uh, versus traditional method. So before I start with the presentation, let me introduce you with the content of it. So I will follow the usual IMRAD structure and finish it with some recommendations for our hunters. So you all know very well how important is it to properly estimate population abundance in any hunting ground. We already heard many uh, presentations before about the estimates of ground here in Vojvodina or before with the large carnivores. And besides this necessity and this need to know with what population abundance number we uh, are managing and dealing in the hunting ground, it's also obligatory but by our law. So our hunters, beside the need to better improve their management, are obliged by legislative acts to do it. For that purpose, many methods have been developed to uh, better estimate or in other conditions to estimate the population abundance. And of course, there is huge diversity among them. And every wildlife manager has a challenge to choose the proper method how to estimate population abundance. In our study, uh, we distinguished four characteristics, four parameters, which could uh, better uh, evaluate or define uh, the census method, so it's accuracy, cost of it, then the feasibility, and duration, duration or how fast this method can be implemented in the field. There have been already uh, told about the uh, brown hair abundance, so I will just say that it's one of the most widespread species, let's say, in the world. It all, already covers uh, almost all continents, and concerning the natural conditions, it needs a lowland habitat, actually it prefers lowland habitats, up to 250 meters above the sea level, with every general temperature between 8 and 9 degrees, and 350 to 500 meters uh, average annual precipitation. Concerning the brown hair populations in Serbia, Professor Popovic and Rosko who is already spoke that the highest hair populations, the highest densities can be seen in Vojvodina, which is the region in the north. And due to this uh, high uh, spoke, high number of uh, brown hairs in Vojvodina, it's used as indicator of agriculture, lowland habitats quality. Now, we already heard that uh, brown hair population is declining all over Europe and that it's quite variable in Serbia. So, for that, uh, there have been different uh, factors uh, defined or, let's say, identified, uh, which are mixture of biotic and abiotic and also a bit of anthropogenic factors that influence hair abundance. And for that purpose, we need to know the proper estimates of population abundance of brown hair in order to define the management tools. So, uh, what would be the most suitable method which we can use for the brown hair census in Serbia? That was our goal to find out. And uh, we implemented, uh, actually we did our analysis in Vojvodina in hunting ground Srndac, which is managed by the hunting fellowship uh, from Bačka Topola. These are the characteristics of Vojvodina, but I wouldn't go now through it because it has already been spoken about. I can just, I would just like to say that hunting grounds in Dutch has average, actually has area around 10,000 hectares, where mostly it's dominated by field crops and arable land. Now, uh, the custom in Serbia is that the spring census ha, uh, should be done until the 1st of April when the, hunting year, the new hunting season starts, and usually it's done through traditional method, which is called uh, driven uh, census, so group driven census. 
in uh, counting round of uh, 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 in counting fellowship census, of Vatka Topola, uh, they are doing this uh, traditional round driven uh, census where the hunters uh, are grouped and they form around a circle and then they are moving steadily toward the center and they are uh, counting all the animals which are passing by them. So uh, they are not only focused on the brown hairs, they are focused on all game species which are passing them by. Now, the area uh, of this uh, sample plot is 1,152 hectares and it represents 11% of the total area of the hunting ground. And this is the average area, so this is the area which uh, uh, represent the characteristics and natural conditions in the hunting ground. In this method, 17 hunters have been used to estimate the population abundance. Also, in this this time uh, they use the spotlight census to estimate the population abundance through this method and there have been only four participants used with two lights from one vehicle and they uh, defined four transects where they were estimating population abundance. So uh, the criterion was that there is at least 400 meters difference between these transects. The vehicle, the vehicle was moving in average speed 10 to 15 kilometers per hour. These transects, and they were estimating uh, the number of uh, spotted hairs from 150 meters on the left side and on the right side. So you can see that in total, length of this transect was around uh, 10 kilometers, and uh, the area was 267 hectares. This method was uh, repeated three times in a row, and then the average estimate was used as the final result. So this is how it looked in the field, with the red is a sample plot of a traditional uh, round uh, driven census, and the blue ones, the lines represent transects. And uh, we got results which we divided according to the factors that we wanted to analyze. So, uh, according to traditional method, the round uh, driven census, the estimate is uh, 26 uh, hairs on uh, 100 hectares, which was in totally 2,600 hairs in hunting ground, and the spotlight census method estimated higher uh, number of these hairs. Uh, according to the costs, what we uh, estimated, we wanted to see how much uh, each method uh, cost, and uh, we uh, calculated how much would be the daily allowances for these observers who did the traditional uh, census. Of course, I have to state here that these observers were hunters and they did it on voluntary basis, but however, if we would have to pay them or we use the motto that uh, time is money, that means that this uh, method would cost at least 700 euros in a day. While the spotlight census method, we estimated the used gasoline according to the mileage, and then we also calculated the daily allowances of the observers. So finally, we concluded that we actually uh, estimated that uh, one spotlight census method cost uh, 11 euros. If we repeated it for three times in a row, it cost 33 euros in total. When we checked the feasibility, of course, it's much easier to manage four observers uh, in one vehicle and these are the four observers who already were doing this previously so they are trained in this kind of census then to organize 70 hunters in one day to do the uh, estimates and finally the duration was much shorter where spotlight census was only one hour long comparing to traditional method which let's say in average would take one morning. So in order to uh, make some recommendation we can say that spotlight census method is more accurate, more cheaper, more feasible and faster than traditional one and the estimates were more accurate so uh, it's uh, already a fact that uh, this uh, driven census can underestimate population. 
and in this case it was between 200 and 300 hairs for the whole hunting ground. If we calculate that one hair costs 33 euros, you can imagine what's the difference only in the price and the definition of shooting bag. However, spotlight sensors is only used to estimate ground hairs comparing to traditional method which estimates the abundance of all game species in this sample plot and uh, subjectivity uh, of observers who are used in spotlight sensors can be a threat. So this was a starting uh, research, of course we have to uh, involve some other factors and we are going to repeat this research in the future in order to get uh, more, uh, let's say, significant or better recommendations for our hunters, but so far we can say that this method can be uh, suitable for our hunters who estimate brown hair populations in Serbia. Thank you very much for your attention.